Wow, what a, an introduction. Thank you. I feel a little less nervous. I'm lying. <laughs> um, this is one of my first presentations ever to talk about my work. Um, I always sat with the artists in the booths, and uh, I was always a part, sort of the background. And um, so I'm a little bit nervous standing up here, so just um, bear with me. Um, my name is Natasia Mukash. Um, my father is Matthew Mukash from What Mugs Do. And <laughs> my mom is Danielle Obamsawin, and she's Abenaki from Odenak. Um, and I am a full-time artist. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my beginnings, um, where I started. Um, I, uh, I grew up in a family of artists. My mom was an artist, is an artist, and so is my father. He's a mu musician. Um, as you all know, he's a Cree fiddler. Um, I, I remember being very, very young and um, I knew that I wanted to be an artist from a very young age. And my mom used to take me to the McGill campus uh, to her art class and I remember I used to go there on my days off of school and I remember that day that I walked into that art class and I could smell the paper, the paint, and all of the art supplies that were there. And I was so, I knew that I was in the right place. I knew that's where I wanted to be, something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So um, from that day on, my parents always encouraged me. My brother was my number one fan. My brother is Pekeso Mukash, <laughs> um, who you'll see tomorrow. Um, and I remembered my, uh, one Christmas, um, I was given um, a box of acrylic paints that my dad had brought from the city because we lived in Watmakstu at the time. And as you know, in Watmakstu, you have Northern, you know, the co-op. They don't sell art supplies there, so you're very, very limited. I know what it's like to, to have limited supplies in your communities. So my dad brought this uh, bo wooden box, and I opened it, and there was acrylic paint there, and I was just, I was in love. I was amazed. <laughs> And I knew from then on that this was something I was going to do. Um, I started painting, uh, small paintings. Uh, and um, I remember at one point I started to get into portraits. And I did lots of pencil portraits. And I practiced and I practiced day and night. Um, and then uh, so my first job was really selling portraits. So you'll see um, some of my portraits here. Um, these are in um, these are in Conte, and they're done on something called like newspaper. So this is where some of my beginnings. Um, I didn't start selling my portraits, you know, at a thousand dollars or anything. I started very small. The first portrait, the little Inuit boy on the other side there, um, I, he's twenty-five dollars. <laughs> so I sold my first portrait for twenty-five dollars, and then I started. P people started asking me in the community, so I started selling for $50, $75. And at the time, um, I was a single mom, and uh, my two girls are here, Sage and Jade, they're also artists. And I used to bring them around with me everywhere I went. Um, it was really difficult at that time because I knew I wanted to be an artist, but I knew that it wasn't going to be a lot of money. Um, but I did what I could, and I never gave up. I always, always wanted to paint. I always wanted to draw. I knew that this was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. So this is around the age I was about 18 to my early 20s, and, uh, and I sold portraits. So I started to um, get into different types of mediums, um, watercolor. These two are in watercolor. This is my nephew, Daniel. This is my daughter, Rain. She's not here today. She's 11. And uh, these are small 5 by 7 uh, portraits. And I really, really enjoy uh, painting in watercolor. And then I started to get a little bit more complicated. <laughs> um, I started getting orders. Um, people were seeing my work, and especially my watercolor uh, portraits, and they were really... Uh, 
interested and they were asking me for this, you know, to paint elders. And I was so terrified because um, I had never painted elders before, so I gave, I gave it a shot. So the first one here, um, this is an elder. Um, she's passed away now. And you see her, she's tanning her hide. She's fixing her fish. And the fish are by the lake and going back into the water, the trees in the background. And uh, when I started doing this, there was something different because there was something about spirit. The spirit of the people that I was painting, it, it meant something. And it meant something not only to me, but to the people that I was doing the portraits for. And then somebody asked me to do another elder. So I did the elder there. And you see him, he's doing a walking out ceremony. He's in the boat with his grandchild. And he's, um, I think he's chopping wood in the, with the tent there. So then, as I was getting into my work just a little bit more spiritually and having a little bit more meaning to what I was doing, not just making something look pretty, but it, it had to mean something. And I noticed that I was starting to get very emotional. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't speak my language. I don't speak Cree. I don't speak Abenaki. Um, and this is something I always struggled with. But the thing that I do have in my memory I remember the elders when they used to go down by the river and get the water. That's one of my memories, that elder there, and he has a wooden yoke, and he's carrying water. And he, they used to go up these wooden steps that were made of logs, and that's what you see there. And when I painted it and I showed it in the community, people from Great Well were saying, I know who that elder is. I know who that is. I remember that too. So. Um, it wasn't just my memory, my memories that I was painting. I was also painting memories from the community, memories from the past. Um, these two elders, they've recently passed away. Um, this is uh, our chief, uh, late David Masti, and his wife, Elizabeth. Um, you can see the differences in the portrait in my artwork because the first portrait of David um, I had done it on a regular piece of paper with pencil, but his, her do his daughter really wanted me to draw the portrait, and I said, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll draw David. And then I think it's about maybe six years later, she asked me to do her mother who had passed away. So I did a portrait of her mother, and you can see the difference and the evolution in my artwork, the change in the portrait. And I started working on better paper, I didn't work with just pencils. I started working with charcoals. So, you know, you can see the differences, but they equally have a feeling in there. You can see the spirit. And you can feel it when you look at when you look at it. This is my daughter, Rain, and this is my godson. And um, what really interested me about these portraits were the the Cree bonnets. So I was starting to get you know, working more, um, or I guess more having a vision of starting to do, you know, Cree culture. And maybe this is probably like one of the first, besides my memory, was to, to see if I could um, translate Cree uh, uh, culture into my artwork. So you see the little bonnets here that are made by grandmothers. Um, one thing that I, I've been doing since I was 10 years old are landscapes. And uh, the landscapes of Great Well, I've always, I was always really um, inspired by the landscapes of Great Well. Um, if you ever go there, you'll know what I mean. But I think we feel like that about all our communities. And um, I used to sell small paintings. They were like three inches by two inches, and I used to paint um, sunrises and sunsets. I used to sell them for 20 bucks. <laughs> I think even 10 bucks. And um, I knew I could live off of my artwork, you know. But I sort of had lost a sense of my self-worth because I didn't know, um, I didn't know how much to charge for my work. I had children to feed and, you know, I just worked as much as I could and I needed to sell fast. So, of course, uh, you know, 20 bucks here, 50 bucks there. Um, but I survived, you know, my, see my children, they're fully grown. <laughs> they're okay. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so then my landscapes, I started to, um, to get a little bit more intricate in my work. And uh, here you can see the sunset on the Hudson Bay. And I mean, the sunsets are just so amazing in Great Well. Um, they're amazing to capture. And on the one there is uh, commissioned work. It's, um, it's too bad you can't see. <laughs> uh, it looks really good on the screen there. Um, this is Great Well from the top of the mountain. If you've ever been to Great Well and you go to the top of the mountain, that's what you're going to see. It's just, you see the river and you see the Hudson Bay, and it's just, it's fantastic. This is the Manitunic Island. I think every community has one. There's something really amazing about this island, um, something very spiritual about it. Um, we call it the No Pointing Island, and my 11-year-old daughter, she says, why do you call it the No Pointing Island when all I want to do is point at it now? <laughs> the legend goes, as if you point at that island, um, storms are going to come, it's going to get windy, things will happen to you, and there's been proof of that happening. <laughs> so I never point at that island, but it's been something that's in my artwork for a very long time because I feel a connection to that particular island. I've only been on it twice, I think, in my life, um, and it's, it's fantastic, it's beautiful. The bottom painting here, I don't know if you can see it, but um, this is on the book, The Mind's Eye, that was written by Susan Marshall and uh, late Emily Masty. Um, because of the stories in there of what Max do, um, they really felt that this, this island was, uh, would it be perfect for the, um, the cover of the book. So these are uh, other um, landscapes, the sun sets, and then the TP, I started uh, getting really interested in doing um, uh, paintings for walking out ceremonies. So I said, well, I need to learn how to paint a TP first. But these are really small paintings. The one on, uh, on that side, the TP, is about an 8 by 10 painting. I'm sad you won't get to see this one. <laughs> but this is a night scene, and it's, uh, it's a winter lodge. So there was something about this, I, the feeling that when you look at it and you just want to be able to walk into that lodge and talk to the people who are sitting in there and listen to the elder stories. Um, yeah, so. And then uh, my interest in working for, uh, for the people and helping uh, people out. Um, mother started asking me for teepee doors. Can you paint... Uh, a teepee door for me and uh, for the walking out ceremony so I said okay so I did my first teepee door and then after that I just I don't know how many teepee doors I have out there maybe over a hundred now <laughs> um, but these are some of the most intricate um, and my most favorite teepee doors that I've made um, up to date um, the top one you can see the little girl overlooking the Great Well River the little boy, they wanted him to be like an old man, a hunter, so he's holding his gun. Um, this one is, they're inside of a teepee, and there's a, a grandmother teaching her granddaughter how to pluck the geese, and the grandson is coming in with his first kill, so he has the goose there. And then the other one is a, um, a son that's uh, overlooking his, um, his trap line, and the geese are flying in the, in the sun, sunrise. Like I said, I made lots of teepee doors. <laughs> it was hard to choose my favorite ones, but uh, you know, you can see the theme over and over again. You know, can you paint the teepee and the sunrise? And you know, I know that this is a scene that means so much to all of us. Uh, the top one is really interesting because we have a lot of mixed families in Great Well between the Inuit and the Cree. So there, you see the teepee and the Inukshuk. Um, I did some stuff on the side too. I've always worked on contract um, with the Cree entities and, and, I've all, and I've helped also with weddings. People ask me to make wedding banners. So this is kind of stuff that I do on the side, you know, just to be able to pay my bills and, you know, to, um, and to put my name out there, of course. So you might recognize some of these logos. There's the journey of Nishiyu. I think everybody knows what that journey is and what it represents. Um, and some of the other logos, uh, the daycare. This is the new WFN Youth Council logo. 
I see that the old one is still there. <laughs> this one is recent. The Sundance logo. And these are the wedding banners. Um, I remember seeing my mom at a very young age, and this is so important to me, because I think that, you know, what your children see you doing, um, it's going to do something to them. It's going to inspire them. You know, they're going to follow in your footsteps. And I remember seeing my mom doing lettering uh, for, uh, for, for signs, you know, in Great Well. And that's when I started to get into lettering. And it's a lot of calculation and math. You know, when they tell you you don't need math and art, I'm sorry, you do. <laughs> it's very important. Um, and this one was one of my friends, uh, Sheila. And she said, make me a wedding banner. And then she says, can you add all the names of my bridesmaids and groomsmen? So that's, those are all the names. And that was the last time I did that, something like that. And there's another wedding banner there. Um, I don't do wedding banners anymore. Um, it's a lot of work. Uh, I now uh, wanted to teach my children to take over some of the things that I do or that I don't do anymore. Um, this is an interesting series because this came to me, I was asked by the CNYC to do 10 paintings. Um, I remember I had 10 days, <laughs> it was a last minute order, um, and I said yes, I said uh, I'll do it. Um, so I had 10 days and I was in college at the time. Um, I went to college for a few years, I was in fashion school. Um, so this is the Goose series. Um, I didn't know what to paint when they asked me to make 10 paintings. I said, what am I gonna do in so little amount of time? And I remember my father telling me uh, about hunting. And he said, you know, when we go hunting, um, when you see the two geese, you shoot the female, and the male will come down to get the female, and that's when you shoot the male. And of course, that makes me very sad. <laughs> I always felt, you know, that was a, you know, but I, of course I understand that it's important, you know, but what I got out of that was that the amazing story that geese are monogamous. Geese have no other partner. They have one partner and that's the one they stay with till death. So what was so beautiful about this is that um, I didn't want to paint just regular geese. I wanted to paint the spirit of the geese. And that's what these are. Um, my style has changed, of course. My geese have evolved. Uh, you can see the first, the, the one red, the blue, and the yellow one, the top three there. Uh, the style is different from the bottom one. Um, I painted 10 of these. Um, they were quite big. And uh, something, something changed in me when I painted those. I had to let go. I had to let go. I was doing portraits. I was doing logos. And it's very tedious work small lines, you know, you have to make sure that everything is perfect. You know, if, you're, if you miss your portrait and, and, you, and that person gets it and they say, that doesn't look like the person I asked you to paint, <laughs> you know, that's where it's terrifying. Um, so this taught me to let go, that it didn't have to be perfect, or what I thought perfection was. Um, I worked with color, I was just like, really like 10 days of just painting was, it was fantastic, it was the best feeling. Um, I started getting orders, uh, it was really interesting, the one in the corner there, it's a mother, a single mother and her son, and uh, she had asked me, can you, can you paint a goose for me? She says, I want one of your geese paintings, but I want it to be about me. And when she asked me that, I was a bit nervous. I said, oh my gosh, like, you know, I hope I don't insult her by the way I paint the geese or whatever. But this vision came, and amazingly enough, that goose really looks like her. <laughs> I think it's the spirit and just the way you can see that she's protecting her son and through all the elements, day and night, and... Um, and when she, when she received it, sadly I wasn't there when she received it and she said that she, she cried and she loved it. And that's what, you know, that, I don't want to say I like to see people cry, <laughs> but when they receive your work and you see them crying because they feel good, because 
you know, the artwork makes them feel good, that's what tells me I know I'm in the right place and I know that I'm doing the right job. These were more of the geese, the 10 geese. Um, I don't know where all of them are because they were auctioned off. Sadly, I didn't receive like where they were, but I know that the one on the far end is, uh, I believe, at the Cree School Board in Mistisney. These were more orders that I got. At the bottom here, there's a family, the two geese, the children, and um, this couple had lost children in miscarriage, and uh, she said, can you somehow incorporate them as part of our family portrait? And uh, I showed them as being um, the light of the creator. You see those three little balls of light there? Um, because in the center, that's the light of God, it's the light of creator. And that's what makes these paintings so spiritual and so meaningful. More of the geese. I started working on 12 by 12 geese because people were asking me like constantly for orders and I said, you know what, I'm just going to paint what I feel and people can choose the one that they feel closest to. And all of these were sold pretty quickly. Um, and each individual that received them had sent me a message saying, oh, this is, this is exactly, you know, the way I had imagined it, and thank you so much, and it means so much to me. So this is, uh, I called it art that matters, but, you know, all art matters. But there's something about this because um, I had reached a point in my life where I didn't know what I was doing anymore. I felt a little lost. Uh, like everybody else, you know, you, you're, you're not sure where you are in your life. You're not sure where you want to go. You know, you're not making millions of dollars like everybody said you would. Um, and uh, I think you recognize this. You probably recognize these two paintings. Uh, the one on the other side there is Abby Masti. She was uh, 12 years old when she walked on the journey of Nishiu. She walked from Waskaganish to Parliament Hill. And she was walking uh, against violence, against women. So it, this painting meant a lot to her. We auctioned it off and it went to her foundation, the Abby Masti Foundation. Um, the painting here is my late cousin, Isaac Kowapit. Um, they had called him the White Wizard. I think everybody knows who the White Wizard is during the journey of Nishiyu. And there's something amazing about this painting, um, and I've had to talk about it a few times, and I, I get kind of emotional to talk about it. You know, not, not just because he had passed away, but I think because of what he represented. Um, he struggled a lot with um, substance abuse, and I know that it's, it's, um, it's like that throughout the Cree Nation. And um, when he had passed away, um, we didn't know, um, sorry, they had to send his body out for an autopsy and we had, um, we didn't know if we had a week or two weeks for the funeral and we were just running around trying to get things together uh, to prepare for, the f for his funeral and I think it hit the nation too because a lot of people were sending their prayers and you know they were they were really sad of, to hear about his passing because he had done so much for the youth. youth. He had represented the youth um, because he had knowledge of the land. He didn't have an education, but he had a knowledge that our elders hold, and that was the knowledge of the land. Something that, that's what I had hoped to have when I moved back to my community. And that's the knowledge that he held. So when I started painting this uh, painting, I remember it was 10 o'clock in the evening, and they told us it could be another week till his funeral. So I started to paint, and interestingly enough, as, as I was painting, um, I saw my father, and uh, that's my, my father's uh, nephew. And I said, oh, I have to work on this more, you know? So I continued painting and painting throughout the night, and it started to look like my brother. And I said, oh, I got to keep working on this, you know. It has to look like Isaac. And then as I was finishing the painting and I changed a few things and Isaac started to appear, um, 
my computer turned on, which I thought was really odd because it was like four o'clock in the morning. I thought maybe I was, you know, seeing things. <laughs> and uh, it was a slideshow that my daughter had worked on for his funeral. And there was a short video on there. And you hear Isaac and he says, hi. So I jumped when I heard him talking and I looked back. And sure enough, the little video went on the screen. And that gave me, it kind of let me know or gave me the permission to paint his portrait. And then I signed my name. And that's when um, that's the painting was used um, at his funeral. So this painting means a lot to me. And uh, it's going to be uh, in an exhibition that's going to travel throughout the Cree Nation, so everybody will get to see it in their communities. So this is, uh, my brother had asked me to, help, to make a tattoo. So my, my brother actually has, uh, he had asked permission if he could have Isaac tattooed on his arm. You'll see it tomorrow. And he says, can you, can you add more? To, to the tattoo, he says, I want it all on my arm. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. So there was something about what Isaac represented, and he represented the land. And I remember one of the stories of him hunting when uh, uh, someone had said that the animals started to appear to him and only to him. And I believe it's because he had that connection, that knowledge with the land that, the, that our elders have. So here you see the ptarmigan, and you'll see fish, and there's lots of detail. And uh, this is the journey home because he's walking back home. To me, this is what heaven is. This is, I feel like, you know, this is where I want to go when I cross over. I want to be back on the land. I want to be on the land where our people, our people are and our people were. You'll see the geese, the caribou. And this is just a small 8 by 10 drawing, um, just in, uh, in chalk and uh, Conte. So, um, so this is me in the studio. Um, I worked in Montreal um, out of my home. Uh, my studio was in my bedroom. My studio was anywhere it could be, any small space. That's where I worked in the living room, you know, as the kids. <laughs> Um, this was one of our apartments. You see my husband, Matthew. There's me. And my daughter, Rain, is there. And uh, this is how we would work. My husband's a musician, so he would be recording his music on one side, and I'd be painting on the other. I think this one here, I'm doing the big painting of the community of Great Well. And then we moved uh, to Great Well uh, about three years ago. We moved back to the, the community. I wanted to reconnect. Um, we had left uh, Great Well to live in the city because we wanted our children to, to go into the arts and to go into art school. And we were there for about eight years. And uh, I think after eight years, we had had enough. And we said, it's time to go home. And we packed up and we went home. And then uh, a year later, we were lucky we got a house. And that's our studio in the basement. And we still work the same. Matthew has his studio and I have mine. Um, and the kids work in there as well. So this is me at some of the venues that I've, been, I've worked at. Um, one of my favorite places to have painted at was the Cree Cultural Institute. If, um, I would love to have my studio there. <laughs> the windows, I mean, it's amazing, the lighting and all that. And I painted the two geese there and they bought the painting on the spot. And here you can see me uh, uh, showcasing my painting, Isaac's painting. And then the one in the corner there is um, my landscape paintings, and they bought five of them for the Justice Building in Great Well. So um, I always tell people to go to the Justice Building even if you don't need to go there, but that's where my artwork is in the community. Um, one thing I started doing, I wanted to um, reproduce my artwork. Um, so I started printing my own cards. Um, this is actually um, quite cute. This is my daughter, Legend, my last baby, my fourth daughter. Um, I wanted to start doing more stuff around, based around the Cree culture. And uh, yes, she's in a canoe there. <laughs> um, this is interesting because um, I used whatever I had around the house. Um, some of my dresses are in there. The, my dress is the one that makes up the stove. 
um, the teepee and, and you know the water all of this is made out of fabrics and I put everything together and I started a series and I called it little Ukumau. so she's our little grandmother and I have uh, seven of these cards and uh, people were telling me to make a book and perhaps uh, have it in Cree which is something that I'm I think I'm gonna look into um, I think that it would be a great children's book so I make, I've made hundreds of these cards by myself. I print them, I cut them, and I sign them all individually. So um, what I'm doing today, um, like I said, I'm a full-time artist. I have never stopped producing. I have never stopped painting. There's so much more work I wish I could show all of you, but, um, but unfortunately, there's not that much time. So this is something new. Social media started coming out, so everybody was bugging me to get a Facebook page, a business page, and I said, okay, okay. <laughs> so I gave in. Um, it's really difficult to keep up with something like this because people want to see you do something constantly, like you always have to be producing. So I show everything. Like I show the beginning of my painting to the end of my painting because I want people to see my process and my working process. So this is my Facebook page. A lot of my artwork is on there. You can go see more of my artwork on my, um, my albums there. And everything is there. Um, I started doing something new last year. Um, this is something new for me to speak in front of a crowd. I'm an artist. I'd rather be painting. I'm a little bit terrified to talk to people. Um, if I look angry, I'm not angry. I'm just shy. <laughs> So I started saying yes to everything. Um, Mamui Dao had been asking me for years, can we interview you, can we interview you? And I always said no. I always said, I don't like the way I look, I don't like the way I paint, I don't want anybody to watch me paint. And I said yes. So there you see me, I'm being filmed by Mamui Dao. Um, this is the one where I'm talking about my cousin's painting, about Isaac, the white wizard. And then uh, I ended up in the, um, I don't think it's the, is it the Air Quebec magazine? Under the Cree Nation Arts and Crafts Association now. So they wrote an article about me and my artwork. And so you can see a little bit of my biography there as well. I started going back to sketching. Um, these are interesting sketches because these are sort of like my dreams and the legends that we hear in our communities. And there was a dream that I had about the turtle. Um, there's this little island in Great Well that seems to be coming closer to the land. And my daughter had had a dream saying, I dreamt that was a turtle. And I said, you know what, me too, I had that dream. And then, um, so I drew it. And it's just a rough sketch, nothing big, nothing special. But everybody fell in love with it when I posted it on social media. And I was like, wow, you know, it's just a sketch, but I guess it's pretty good. And the bottom one is the Manitunic Island. What I always imagined underneath that mystical, you know, island. And it's the city under the sea. Um, I started painting, going back to portraits. I don't do portraits anymore. I don't take orders. Um, I just wanted to start painting for myself. What's, what comes from me, you know, how, what is it that I, I want to paint? Um, and this is a portrait of my, my grandmother whom I never met. This is my father's mother. And uh, the child, she's holding a child. I'm not done the portrait yet. And uh, this would be my uncle who had passed away when he was very young and I never got to meet him. And this was an emotional thing for me because I started painting grandmothers and something started to come to me because, like I said in the beginning, I always felt some sort of disconnection uh, with my identity uh, as being Cree. And everybody would say, you're a Cree artist, you're a Cree artist, you know, you're Cree. And I would say, well, I don't speak Cree, so I don't feel like I'm Cree or EU. You know, what makes me EU? Um, and then I thought about it, and I always wanted people not to put me in the category of being a native artist because I had to find myself first, to identify myself first as a native person, an EU. And uh, 
So when I started painting these portraits, something started happening to me. My grandmother started talking to me. And, you know, I realized that I'm not, I'm not a native artist. I'm just an artist who happens to be native. And how do I translate this in my artwork? How do I show you who I am through my artwork? And these were the portraits of the elders that I started. And up here, there's these two elders in their teepee, and they're cooking. And yes, that's a bucket of lard, <laughs> sugar, flour, the tender flake, you know, all of that. Um, they're frying pans. I think she's frying bannock. Um, so I started painting these grandmothers, and I realized that I was finally getting my teachings that I wanted for so many years because I didn't have that. I didn't have a Cree grandmother to teach me anything about being in the bush or becoming a Cree grandmother myself. So at the bottom here, this is my daughter. This is Legend. Um, she's really amazing. All my children are amazing. Um, but I think, I think she's my last baby. <laughs> and my girls, they help so much, you know, and she's learning so fast and so quickly. And a lot of people have said to me that when they see her photos on the internet that she heals them. And, you know, I never thought that, you know, my work or anything would help people, but it has helped people. And I think that that's what's important about being an artist is that you're not, you know, just making things that look pretty, but you're making things that help people feel, feel in their lives. And, and I believe that you know, that's where I'm finally getting at, you know. Now I'm 37, I'm no longer youth. I'm now a guest speaker, I'm not a delegate. <laughs> um, and, and I'm getting there, you know. I'm still working, I'm still learning, and, and that's, that's my work. Um, this is my whole family. Um, I've always brought my children with me everywhere I went. My two girls are here, there's Jade and Sage. They have their own booths now. There was a time when I became a part of the CNYC. It was about uh, 18 years ago. Um, or, yeah, 17, 18 years ago, I was part of the CNYC. And uh, these were the events that started me off in my artwork. It was, you know, events like this to bring out the artists that made me start, you know, being introduced to other artists, to my colleagues. You know, Tim is my colleague. All of you are my colleagues now. And uh, of course, I had my mentors as well. Um, I always believe in, you know, helping each other and working with each other. We're not in competition with each other. You know, we, we should be supporting each other. And this is my family who have supported me for so many years. And my parents have supported me. My brother has supported me. My husband has supported me. You probably know him, Matthew Eiserhoff, Jr. Um, he was in the band Ceremony, a Juno Award winner. And uh, he still does his music. And I have my art studio. We work out of our home. And my daughters, Sage and Jade, they're artists. And my other daughter, Rain, she's not here today. I wish I could have brought her. She's 11 years old and she is an amazing singer and she's an amazing artist as well. Um, I believe that all of these years, because I never gave up, I always knew what I wanted to be. I knew I was an artist and I never, even though I went through struggles, people told me, you know, you know your portraits don't look good or you know, your, your, your artwork isn't any good, I've seen better, you know, or even other artists sometimes had told me, uh, yeah, well, I can do better than that. Um, it, it didn't really, it put me down, but it kept me going, you know. I worked harder, I practiced harder. Just like anything else, like sports or anything else, you have to practice and you have to work at it. And this is where I am today, and um, I'm so thankful for the, the Cree Nation Youth Council to have invited me here to speak today. Um, my first time, so I guess it won't be my last. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, there were so many things I wanted to say, but I just, I wanted to talk about my artwork, and I believe I should talk about what I know. <laughs> so thank you so much, and uh, 
You know, if you want to talk to me, don't be shy. Come and talk to me. There's a lot of things that I've learned along the way about how to, how to start my business, how to continue my business. So don't be afraid to talk to me. If you have any questions, I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to support you. I'm here to inspire you. And I'm here to help you along the way should you need any help whatsoever. Thank you.